we have uh, turned this and decided to turn this into a short-term rental. So we're gonna take you guys on a quick tour of the property, which was actually um, our interior designer, decorator, magician, is actually a relative of mine and she does an amazing job on all of our units she picked out the color scheme so black and gold black and gold with some touches of some fall colors but yeah guys um you've seen it before pictures this house did not look like this before obviously we put a lot of thought and effort into designing it and it really came out we think amazing amazing, amazing. again this is the living room uh, we have bedroom number one right here. Bedroom number one right off of the living room. Because the bedrooms are not huge, um, to make them appear bigger, we do have queen size beds in all both rooms. Like to do a lot of pictures. Um, artwork, artwork, dressing up the walls. Dressing up the walls. Come on through here and check out the kitchen. So as you can see, we have an eat-in kitchen. We have all stainless steel appliances. So new microwave, stainless steel stove, stainless steel uh, French door refrigerator, stainless steel dishwasher. We got the double sink and the new faucet. So we really went, went all out. Of course, kitchens and bathrooms is what sells a home. Um, again, we're not selling this home. This is a short term rental, but we want our guests to be wild when they walk into this property. Why? So we can get five star reviews. Let me just add, uh, people may be asking you why Airbnb, right? We're still in a pandemic here. The reason we chose Airbnb for this property is we felt it was the highest and best use as a rental. Again, we are buy and hold investors. We rarely flip. So we bought this house and I'll go over the numbers in detail later. We bought it. We put about 20 to 25,000 renovations into it. And if we wanted to rent it, we wouldn't have been able to maximize our cash flow. So the next best option was Airbnb, right? So with this property, we rent for about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a month. With a mortgage of about a thousand a month, it just wasn't enough monthly cash flow for it to make sense. Now it can sustain itself as a, as a, a, a long-term regular rental, but again, we want to maximize our profits, maximize, maximize our cash flow. So we decided to put it on Airbnb and short-term rental sites. Um, here's the thing: in this area where we reside. There's very low supply of Airbnbs and very high demand. So when there's low supply, high demand, you can charge premium prices and really make um, good profits. So that's the reason this house should bring in about $3,000 a month in monthly income from Airbnb versus $1,200 for a regular tenant. So after paying our mortgage, paying our utilities, paying our everything after expenses, this house should profit about $1,000 to $1,500 per month. So that's the reason we chose to do short-term rental in Airbnb for this property. We okay. both like snacks. Yes. We both like sweetaholics, I guess. Absolutely. We're sweet addicts. So make sure in your <laughs> short-term rentals, which I've seen in um, a couple of them that we stay in. So we do like staying in Airbnbs as well. My husband likes it a lot more than I do. Um, I don't we really like do. Airbnbs too. I do like Airbnbs. That one in, in Wilmington we stayed in, that was yes, nice. Yes, that one I really like. The Beehive, yeah. <laughs> I typically like not to stay anywhere where I may have to end up cleaning up. So I'm gonna just be real with you. That's the only thing she don't like is that you got you don't have maid service at the Airbnb. But Absolutely. the next one we'll have you know I'll hire some maid service so right. she don't have to pick up after. When I go on vacation or somewhere. I like to stay where I can call downstairs and say, look, um, <laughs> I need this X, Y, and Z, or I can call for room service. So that's my big faux pas with Airbnbs. But make sure you have snacks and drinks for your people when they come visit you. We don't do frosted many ways. I don't. Many ways. We do frosted flakes. Who ate these as a kid though? I don't think anybody <laughs> That ate. was punishment, eating frosted many ways. So frosted many ways. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know why they still make these. Now okay. Apple Jacks and Fruit Loops. We can get with that. Don't act like you had I, Apple I grew Jack. Up, I you grew didn't up, have a real Apple Jack. I grew up on the real Apple Jack. You ain't grew up on the real Apple Not Jack. Not the Jack Jack side of Save a Lot. Right. The he, real Apple Jack. He, he didn't grow up on the real Apple Jacks. He had them, um, what's them, jumping jacks on the, the, what's the name of the? Speak for yourself. I grew up on Apple Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> or the, you know, what was the? See, the, I didn't like those. What was the knockoff Rice Krispies? That was the Snap, Crackle, Pop. And then it got soggy real quick. I don't like soggy cereal. So you had to eat it in like 2.1 seconds. You did, you did. I like them. You like when it got all soggy, you got cake to the bottom of the thing. The reason why I like them is because I didn't like any cereal that you had to add sugar that already came sweet. 
I needed to be able to add sugar to my cereal. Now this woman will add okay, like uh, cut. I might cut. I might sugar you add it. She'll add like eight <laughs> tablespoons and of sugar. And cut. To already <laughs> sugared cereal, she'll add another eight tablespoons. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I am not the only one who has to have sugar in their cereal. Comment below, make sure. Yeah, comment <laughs> below if you also have to have sugar in your cereal. Um, in the cabinets, you know, make sure if you're doing short-term rental, you are a hospitality company, you're like a hotel. So we prov we try to provide all the knickknacks, the creature comforts that people would want. Of course, you got all the silverware and the uh, bowls, shot glasses, my wife thought of that. She, she thinks of like the littlest details that just delight people. Little, little things, things that people remember. Yep. Um, also remember, if you sleep six, you seat six, you have play settings for six and vice versa for hey, our many numbers, right? Six, six, six though. Mm. Mm. But make sure you also have your pots, your pans. Um, what are these, dog bowls? <laughs> what, I mean, what is this? Don't play. Those oh, are these are measuring. Yes, they have Gourmet. the measurements. I thought it was a dog bowl. cook it. Right. <laughs> you know I don't cook. That's right. why I got married. At all. My wife but, is an amazing cook, by the way. Um, I go a little above and beyond also because I make sure we have things that typically people don't have. So we have, you know, crock pots and um, pressure cookers, things of that nature. Things where I know like a lot of people rent our places for holidays. So I also make sure we have a lot of the... Um, necessities for people who are here during the holidays and they're like hey we're gonna have a dinner with our family and things of that nature so i make sure we accommodate a little bit of all that and of course over here we have to have a little delightful adult beverage compliments for our guests wine for Com guest. compliments would be polite and of course we got the black and gold cutlery to go with the decor of the house the thing that i do make sure we put in our house rules because we do have a lot of artwork and things in all of our units is, um, and it stands out, our, how our house shoes are kind of lengthy though. It's a book. <laughs> it's um, a book, yeah. But they get sent it before they can book any of our properties, they must agree to all of them. It says, you break it, you bought it. Um, you which break, is you why buy. We require a security deposit because we have a ton of artwork, a ton of things in our house that we want to keep. Um, so we make it very clear that this is one of the things that um, you will replace or you will pay for if you break it. Yeah, and that's one of the worries about people like, I don't want to rent out my apartment or my room because people are going to have these big knockdown drag out parties. We've been doing this for a number of years and we haven't had any issues. Not to say it doesn't happen, right. but we haven't had any crazy parties with so much trash in our place, knock on wood. Right. But that's why we have security deposits and we have all these lengthy rules for pro, pro tip. tip. Bars. I always make everyone tell me what brings you to town. That's what, I, where are you traveling from? If you don't put it in the initial request, hey, thank you for wanting to stay with us. Where, are you, where will you be traveling from? And what brings you to town? I want to know. You don't have to rent our house. We don't have to rent to you. Keep that in mind. It's yours. It's your property. You don't have to rent to everyone. I don't care what anyone says. That's why we do not, and I do not allow um, automatic booking. I just can't do it, my nerves are bad. So this is bedroom number two, where the magic happens. You see this cheetah print. You already know what time it is. I have never liked <laughs> cheetah print, ever. But our designer, she pulled it together. And she it doesn't just, like cheetah, I like cheetah. It just happened and to she be pulled like it his off. favorite. Yeah. <laughs> when we met, all he wanted me to wear was cheetah shit, y'all. I like <laughs> animal prints. I mean, it's just something so, you better go hook up with a cheetah. So everything he natural me, about it. <laughs> yeah, everything he bought me was cheetah it was something. The hunt. the hunt, that's what it was. It would be cheetah leggings, cheetah blouses, <laughs> like everything was cheetah. I was like, yo, what the hell is going on with him? I got her. Was like, that's how I got her. Ben, ah. I, just, I just like it. I don't know why. I, okay, well then you wear these leggings because I'm not putting them on. <laughs> But, but anyway, this is like the master. You have a, a TV, you got a nice comfortable bed. Again, we want our guests to feel like they're at home, like they're at a spa. We want to really give that high quality feel. So I think we pulled it off with this one. What do you think, honey? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. We're gonna check out the bathroom. Now keep in mind, this is a two bed, one bath bungalow. 
It's 972 square foot, so not huge, but again, it's all about what you do with the space. So this is the bathroom. So the bathroom, we went with a nice custom uh, vanity here. Really has that custom feel with, um, a, a, what is that? Marble quartz type of countertop. It's not yeah. your typical granite. And we redid the shower. So we put ceramic tile all around the shower, put a new tub surround. We didn't have to do that. The one that was in there was fine, but it was dated. So we wanted to really give people a spa-like feel. New toilet, of course. And my favorite part, if you flip the light, hit that main light there, my favorite part is the Bluetooth vent fan. So this oh, actually boy. actually plays music. It plays streams from your phone. So whether you're listening to us on YouTube. You didn't bring the phone out. While you're handling your business or if you're yeah. listening to your favorite track, you didn't play right? the music. You can grab your boo and who knows what, what might go down in here. Cheetah print and all. One of the things that I also made sure I came up with is a price list for anything that goes missing or destroyed, completely what messed up through to, due to makeup or what have you. There's a price list we have for that um, where people have to um, get charged for that. We are a hospitality company. For one of the big fears is a lot of people don't want to rent their space on Airbnb or VRBO home away because they're afraid of someone tearing up their place. Valid concern. That's why we have these measures in place, such as the price list, you break it, you buy it, things like that to protect yourself as the host, as the landlord. All right, guys, so now we're gonna get to my favorite part, which is the numbers. I know we got some analytical folks out there like, hey, break down the numbers for me. So here's the numbers on this property. We purchased this property for $60,000 cash. Mind you, we didn't use any of our own cash to purchase this property. So 60,000 was the purchase price. The, the uh, estimated rehab was $20,000. We ended up going a little bit over budget, so our rehab ended up being 25,000. So if you take 60,000 plus 25, you're at 85. And then to furnish this beautiful apartment, it was about $7,000. So 85,000 plus seven, you're at, we're at 92,000. And we borrowed the $80,000 to purchase and rehab the house from a private investor. So that private investor loaned us $80,000 for six months at 10% interest. So 10% interest on 80,000 is 8,000 in interest that we have to pay them back at the end of six months, so that's 88,000. So you add up the purchase, the rehab, the interest on the, the private loan that we got, plus the, um, the furniture and the decorations, we're at all in $100,000, right? Mind you, we didn't spend any of our own cash. Now the rehab did go over and we did have to pay for the um, decor and the furnishes ourselves, but we used business credit cards. Mind you, you can use business or personal credit cards. We have 0% interest business credit cards we put it on. So now we've purchased the house, you buy, you renovate it, which we've done. You, um, you rent it out, which we're about to do, and then you refinance. So now to the cash out portion. What we did was we went to a local bank and said, hey, we purchased this house, we remodeled it, we would like to put a loan on it right so they came out they sent an appraiser and the appraiser actually valued this house that we paid sixty thousand dollars for after we fixed it up at a hundred and fifty four thousand so the after repair value appraised value of this house that we bought for 60 grand is 154 thousand so we forced the value up now with this local bank they're willing to refinance us do a cash out refinance and lend us 85 percent of that appraised value so 85% of 154,000 is $130,000 new loan that they're giving us. So when they give us the new loan, which is closing next week, we're gonna take that 130,000, we're gonna pay off our private investor, give them their 80,000 back plus their 8,000 interest. We're doing this all within four months, not six months. So we're paying them off early. We're gonna pay off the credit cards that we use for the rehab overage, buying materials and also for the decorations. And we're gonna walk away with about $30,000 tax-free money in our pocket. So that's literally how you buy property with no money out of pocket and how you literally can get cash back when you cash out refinance and you can do it all over again. In fact, we're gonna take that 30,000 and we're actually going to develop the lot next door. We already have the financing lined up. We're going to build two four unit apartment buildings on the lot next door using that $30,000 as a down payment for the development costs. Once we cash out refinance, we're going to walk away with $30,000 tax free money. 
is tax free because it's loan proceeds. So again, we're taking a new loan, we're paying off our investor, and because we have to pay back that 130 is loan proceeds, so we don't have to pay taxes on that, on that money. That's how that is tax free money. But again, we use those funds to buy more investment properties to generate more income. So now we refinanced the property, we paid off our private lender with interest early. Now we have this beautifully furnished Airbnb, again, that we spent no money out of pocket to acquire, and we're not gonna flip it, we're not gonna sell this, we're keeping this. So you may be asking, okay, what are the financials on how you can keep this property after you refinanced it? So our new mortgage payment on $130,000 loan percent. So our mortgage payment is gonna be right around $1,000 per month. Uh, when you add in uh, internet, uh, security system, utilities, water, electric, we're going to be about thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars a month. But this property will bring in about three thousand a month as a short-term rental. Your average nightly rate would be about one hundred and fifty dollars a night. So when you take that three thousand monthly income, you subtract out about fourteen to fifteen hundred in expenses. This property is projected projected to earn us about fifteen hundred dollars a month in profit. So that's literally from start to finish the exit strategy on buying, renovating, re refinancing, cashing out a short-term rental property. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video. We appreciate you. And I hope you guys enjoyed that breakdown of the numbers, the actual numbers on this Burr deal. Make sure you like the video, share it with a friend or two or three. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. And remember guys, it costs you nothing to be polite.